This morning, our scripture lesson comes from 2 Samuel, the 6th chapter. If you would take your Bibles, I'm reading from the New American Standard Version of the Scriptures. So if you would take your Bibles and turn there with me. And we're going to read down to verse 5. We're going to read two portions of this chapter. We're going to read verses 1 through 5. And then we're going to read 12 through 16. This, this sermon concludes our study, sermon series study, on David. We've been looking at David as the chosen leader. This sermon is the pinnacle of the series. So thank you so much for tuning in over the last two months. 2 Samuel chapter 6, say amen. Amen. We're going to begin reading in verse number 1. Now David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people who were with him to Baal Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by name, the very name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned above the cherubims. They placed the ark of God on a new cart that they might bring it from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill, and Uzzah, and Ehud, and the sons of Abinadab were leading the new cart. So they brought it with the ark of God from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. And Ehud was walking ahead of the ark. Meanwhile, David and all the house of Israel were celebrating before the Lord with all kinds of instruments made of fir wood, with lyres, harps, tambourines, and castanets, and cymbals. Now, Turn with me, or look down rather, to verse number 12. Now it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belonged to him on account of the ark of God. David went up and brought the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. And so it was that when the bearers of the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fat man. And David was dancing before the Lord. He was doing that with all his might. David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouting and the sound of the trumpet. I'm going to read one more verse, 16. Then it happened as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David that Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked out the window, saw King David leaping and dancing. She did not like it. He was doing it before the Lord, the Bible says. And she despised him in her heart. Amen. I want to talk this morning about Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey. In life, walking with the Lord and fulfilling the purpose for your life as a chosen leader and as an anointed vessel of God's servant. It has both thrills and it also has some challenges. We have looked very closely at the life of the chosen leader David. David was a man after God's own heart, the Bible tells us. And even though David was a man after God's own heart, and we've had the wonderful experience to vividly look up closely at David's life, we've noticed that there have been some victories where David was up and he was riding high. Then we have noticed that there were some mistakes that David made along the way during the course of the journey. Then we have noticed that David was faced with some challenges and some obstacles that were put before him as he was God's chosen leader moving towards the place that God would have him to be, his destiny. 
But I want you to understand that your life that you have been granted by God is to fulfill purpose just like David's life. You see, destiny is that magnet that pulls you along as you pursue and do what God has called you to do. And on the journey of life and on this purpose journey, you learn that endurance is very important. Every day is not going to be an exciting day. It's not going to be a fun day. People often want to have fun in life. They want to do something exciting all the time. But life is simply just not that way. Every day is not going to be a fun-filled day. There are going to be some days where you will be saddened by what has happened. You won't feel the excitement. You won't feel the thrill. You will experience some challenges in life. And then there are going to be some days where nothing is going to be happening. It's just going to be a routine day. And I said that to let you know that despite what happens in the course of a day and along the journey that you are walking along, is to remember that your passion is fueled by your calling. You're calling what God has said that you should do and be doing. That is what drives you. That is what motivates you. That is what wakes you up in the morning. That is what motivates your heart. That is what prompts the thoughts of your mind to do those things as you progress through the stages of the journey of life. Mm. Understand that God, God, God is going to walk with you during the steps of life. He is not going to leave you nor forsake you. He will be there along the journey of life. I need for you to understand that because as you walk along the journey, my encouragement and admonishment to you today is to enjoy the journey. Mm. I so happened to be one day watching a sports documentary that uh, was about Jerry Rice. And for those of you who keep up with football, Jerry Rice played for the San Francisco 49ers. And they were going over Jerry's history and talking about the various playoff runs and the Super Bowl runs. And it talked about how Jerry was so methodical and how he was a disciplined trainer and how he put the work ethic in and how he grinded hard along his journey. And they were approaching Super Bowl 24. And during that year, they brought in a player total opposite of Jerry Rice. They brought in a flamboyant, a high fashion profile player by the name of Deion Saunders. They brought him in because they needed a good quarterback, a cornerback on the defensive side. Mm -hmm. And Jerry would be on the offensive side. But as they got to that week, of Super Bowl 24, the documentary said that the two of them faced off because of wanting the team to stay focused during the week of the Super Bowl. Well, Jerry Rice wanted the team to stay intact, stay, stay close to the hotel, do what they were supposed to do, stay in that methodical mode. And flamboyant Deion Saunders says, no, wait a minute, guys, hey, we got this. We're going to win this game with no problem. Hey, let's enjoy, let's have some fun. Deion Sanders said something that I shall never forget. He said, Jerry Rice is a great player. He said, but Jerry did not enjoy the journey. Mm. That statement has always stuck in my mind that as you and I walk with Jesus Christ, that we should enjoy the walk. We should enjoy the journey. That's why the hymn writer says, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Uh -huh. So as you walk with Jesus, as you become enriched in the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, instead of regressing, you should be progressing towards the gates of heaven. And as you move towards the gates of heaven, you see the cross. You see the cross and you keep moving toward the cross because you know what the cross stands for. Yes, sir. Cross stands for perseverance and endurance and suffering and you're going to experience all kinds of things on this journey as God's chosen leader but as you walk the journey mm. 
you can still enjoy the journey Hallelujah. as you walk with God because too many people walk up tight. They get frustrated. They fall off the wagon. They get back on. They start over. They don't enjoy the progressiveness of walking with God. And that is what I want to tell you all today. And that is what I want to teach about. How do you enjoy the journey? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do you enjoy the purpose? How do you enjoy the assignment? How do you go through the ups and the downs? And how do you go through your suffering? That's what David teaches us. You can come to that place in the journey where destiny is fulfilled. David has reached the point now where he is king over all of Israel and Judah. David has come through 19 chapters and finally gotten to the place of destiny. The king is now here. Second Samuel chapter 6 is a big chapter in the Bible. I need for you to note that this morning because it lets us know that Israel's king is back on the throne. Initially, it was God who was to be Israel's king. It was God who said, I want to be your God and you shall be my people. And you don't need a physical king on the throne. But the people pushed so hard against that that God gave them a king. That's why you have to be real careful for what you ask for. God gave them a king, and they got King Saul. King Saul was a tyrant. He was jealous. He was a person who was not in control of his emotions. He was not a man after God's own heart. He did not love God the way that a king of Israel should love God. He was spiteful in all his ways. And we have come to chapter 6 in 2 Samuel and the king that the people wanted is dead. Uh -huh, uh -huh. As a matter of fact, he has committed suicide. And his apparent heir, Jonathan, is dead as well. And in the interim, Abner, Saul's uh, man, lieutenant, has come and made Saul's son, Mephibosheth, king. But Mephibosheth didn't know anything about being a king. He was just a figurehead uh, person. And Abner was the one that was really behind the scenes calling all the shots. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 4 and 5, Abner makes a deal with David because they knew all the while that David was supposed to be the king. And David is made king through a covenant between Abner and David. And now Israel's king is back. He's on the throne. God's man is on the throne. And he is fired up with a vision. He is ready to go. He is ready to take charge. He is ready to lead. He is ready to move Israel forward. He has a big vision of moving the ark of God back towards Jerusalem. It had been a long, a long time before the ark of God had been in Israel's presence. The Philistines, the enemy of Israel, had taken the ark some time ago. And David now is at the pinnacle of destiny. And the first thing that he calls for is a celebration. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's what I want to teach you. For, to teach you, the first thing I want you to know is learn to celebrate. Today, we want to learn, in this very first point, is learn how to celebrate on the journey of life. Life doesn't have to be COVID-19 depressive. Life, life can be celebrated. Life can be enjoyed. This does not have to be a dreary time in our lives. We ought to praise God, as many of you all have done. You've had drive-by anniversaries, drive-by birthday celebrations, drive-by graduation parties. Babies have been born. Some people have even gotten promotions. This can also be a time of celebration, and life should be celebrated. David, arriving at the point of destiny, king of Israel, this was a major milestone. David, over his life, has sacrificed in his spirit, gone through mistakes, fought the Philistines, survived hiding in and out of caves, and now at the inaugural event as king, Israel has come to a place of celebration 
as they bring the ark of the covenant of God back to Zion. My question to you all today is when was the last time you had a moment of celebration? When was the last time you celebrated some aspect of life and living? When was the last time that you applauded God and thanked God and praised God? When was the last time you just paused to give God some thanks and to take the time to say, Lord, this is the day that you have made. I am alive and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. When was that last time when you lifted up your hands and celebrated who God is in your life? David, in verse number one, caused 30,000 men of Israel to help him. If you read back, and back in the first Samuel, David never had 30,000 men. At most, he had 600 men with him at one time. But now as king, now that he's on the throne, now that he's in the position, he can call up 30,000 men. Look at how God will bless you. Mm. David and the 30,000 men and the people of Israel traveled to get the Ark of the Covenant. And verse 5 says a celebration started. They were celebrating before the Lord. All kinds of instruments were poured out. Everything that day was closed in, in Israel. The bakeries were closed. The cleaners were closed. The gas stations were closed. Everything was shut up that day because now the king has instituted something that we can praise God for. The presence of the Lord is coming back to Israel. We've been so long without the presence of the Lord, but now that the presence of the Lord is here, we're going to praise him and worship God. It was a big festival time. The parade was all over the city of Israel because David has come to the throne and he's bringing the ark of God back to his rightful place. It was a time of worship. And worship in Israel was having a worship party. They were partying like it was 1999. And when you have a worship party, you put on good clothes. You got to have good music. And you got to have a good band. And, and you got to set the right atmosphere. And that's what Israel had. They were having them a good time in the Lord. Because the vision of God was being put in place by the man of God to bring the art of God back to its original place. It was time for celebration because the Ark of the, God, Ark of the Covenant had laid dormant for over 50 years. That means the glory of the Lord had been absent. For almost 50 years. Israel had religion, but they did not have any glory. All right. They had the law, but they had no glory. They were going through the motions of religion, but they had no glory. How can you have religion, but no glory? Look out, look out. The people, for a long time, were now excited about the glory of the Lord being present. The presence of the Lord is here. And the people sounded the alarm and all the instruments were blowing their horns. It's a celebration time along the journey of life. My brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you. Take some time just to celebrate. It's, it's time to, to celebrate who you are in God. Celebrate who the people are in your life. Celebrate God saving your soul. Look back from where you have come from and see where you are now. Think about all the good things that God has done for you. Think about the many blessings that God has brought you through. Just because it is 2020, we thought we were going to have perfect vision and the vision doesn't seem to be so perfect. That does not mean that God does yeah, not need to yeah, be celebrated. Yeah, yeah. He is still God. He is oh, still yeah. on the throne. He still reigns. He is still in charge. He is still King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah, Jesus. Still celebrate God. Celebrate his presence in the midst. God is present and his presence deserves to be praised. Mm -hmm. So as you celebrate along the journey, that's very important. But the second thing along the journey is to monitor the traditions. Now, what do you mean by that, Pastor? As you walk along the journey, it is very important 
not to forget where you have come from. History is so very important. And as people walk along the journey, they have a tendency not to remember the past. The text in verses 6 through 11 teach us that yes, it's good to celebrate along the journey. But as you celebrate along the journey, you must celebrate the proper way. Oh, I know you're on the throne. I, I know the king is here. I, I know you have arrived. I know you're at that place where destiny has brought you to. But just because you are in charge does not give you full authority to do it the way that you want to do it. Israel had a process and the way and a manner in which the Ark of the Covenant was to be handled. The law had outlined how the ark should be carried. But because David had a big vision, David is this young king, and you know, people get excited when a young leader comes upon the scene. They now say, we got us a king, we got us a leader, we got us a young pastor, we got somebody that's going to be with us for a long time, that's going to love us and lead us. And David did have this big vision. Bring an Ark of the Covenant back to Israel. The Ark of the Covenant goes all the way back to Moses when the people of God had come out of Egypt, moving toward the land of Canaan. And God gave specific instructions to Moses of how the Ark of the Covenant was to be moved. Because the Ark of the Covenant was a chest that was overlaid with gold. It was 45 inches long. It was 27 inches in depth. And with inside of the ark, there were three things. There were two tablets of the law that was given to Moses. There was a pot of manna and Aaron's rod that had budded. And the law of the tablets, that represented the word of God. The pot of manna represented the word of God and Aaron's bud that had budded represented the power of God. And the chest was called the mercy seat. Uh -huh. And the Ark of the Covenant was housed in a tent or a sanctuary. That was known as the tabernacle. And the Ark of Co the Covenant was sacred. God gave Moses specific instructions on how it should be handled because it represented the power, the promise, and the provision of God. And the Israelites were consistently taking the Ark of the Covenant with them into battle. So yes, moving the Ark of the Covenant was a good idea. It was a very smart idea. But even though it was a smart idea and all the people had come together to move the Ark of the Covenant and they were celebrating God, they did not do it according to tradition. Now, I know some people want to just do away with all tradition, but that is not God. There are some things that God has instituted that needs to be done the way that they've always been done or the way that has been outlined by God. All right. The method was wrong. Mm. Because the method was wrong, it slowed down the progression. And in life, as you move along the journey, it paid to do it according to the pattern, the way that God has outlined it, so that when you get to certain points, you can keep moving along the path. God demands reverence. Amen. Amen. It is our job to make Israel, I mean, make God smile and allow history, tradition, past concepts to teach you how to maneuver in the present and in the future. All right, all right. So what happened is, I keep saying that something went wrong. What went wrong, they were moving the Ark of the Covenant, but they were, they put it on a new cart. And the, and the, and the, and the law never said anything about a new cart. As a matter of fact, the way that they came to that concept, they watched how the enemy did. Mm -hmm. And they adopted what the Philistines had done 
And that made God upset. Because as they were moving the Ark of the Covenant, the covenant slipped. And Uzziah reached out his hand and tried to push the Ark of the Covenant back up. And that was wrong. And God killed Uzziah that day on the spot. That's right. That's right. My brothers and sisters, you don't want to make God upset. You want to enjoy the journey. Mm -hmm. So whatever this word says, you ought to abide by it. Whatever this word says, you ought to do it. Whatever this word says, you ought to read it. Whatever this word says, you ought to try to fulfill it. Because this is your road map. This is how you should behave. This is how you should go about your directions. This defines your purpose. This defines who you are in God. This defines who you are in Christ. I don't care what people say you are. You are who you are in God by the way that the word defines who you are. And if the Bible has a certain method and a, method and a certain plan, that is what you should govern your life by. It made a mistake. But I don't want you to fall off the wagon because you made a mistake. God will allow you to recover from the mistake. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they moved. They had to come up with a, a quick method to get things back in line. And they moved the Ark of the Covenant to Obed-Edom's house. It was God's time and David's time to make sure things got back in this rightful place. So yes, you may have experienced a setback. Yes, you may have done something that was not according to plan, but you can be redeemed. You are never too damaged that you cannot be redeemed. You are never too lost that you cannot be found. You are never too hurt that you cannot be healed. You are never too empty that you yeah, cannot yeah, be yeah, filled. Yeah. You are never too burdened that you cannot be revived. You are never too cracked that you cannot be restored. You are never too dead that you cannot be resurrected. The Lord will put you back on the journey of life because he has called you to this journey. He has chosen you to this journey. And because he's chosen you to this journey, he will see to it that you get back on track, that you are restored and get back to the place where you can celebrate who God is. Hallelujah. The Ark of the Covenant, it moved mm -hmm. to the house of Obed Edom. So the third thing I want to tell you the Ark of the Covenant was moved to Obed Edom's house. And they now were in a place to move the Ark of the Covenant again. The third thing that I want to tell you celebrate on the journey, monitor and pay attention to the traditions, but pace yourself along the journey. Some of y'all just move fast. Just fast, 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 fast. Take your time. And pace yourself along the journey. The text says that the Ark of the Covenant was moved to the house of Obed-Edom. Now that the Ark was at Obed-Edom house, David realized that Obed-Edom house was being blessed. And because the house was being blessed, David realized that God will in turn bless me. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you, just because you look at somebody else's journey, and they are being blessed. And they are receiving. And God is granting them grace. Don't you think that God cannot do the same thing for you? When, As a matter of fact, when you see somebody else getting blessed, you ought to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that my friend, thank you, Lord, that my family is being blessed. Honor God for the blessing that he is doing in somebody else's life. Why should you do that along the journey? Because your blessing is right around the corner. Your blessing is coming right behind the other person's blessing. So what God has done for others, yes, he will certainly do the same thing for you. Listen, Obed Edom house was being blessed, but mm -hmm. destiny that God wanted for David to fulfill was not destroyed. Mm. David knew that moving the Ark of the Covenant was not yet complete. He hadn't lost sight of what God wanted him to do. And I want to press on you real hard right now to keep pressing towards your goal. 
Keep pressing toward the mark. Keep pressing in the journey because now is not the time to give up. Now is not the time to turn back. Now is the time to say, though he walks with me and he talks with me, yes, I'm going to see it to the end. Yeah. David regrouped. Hmm. He went back. You know what he did when he went back? He studied the law. Because that was a part of Israel's history. He studied the law. And the law said that you should carry the ark. But there were certain people who should carry the ark. The priests should carry it. They should be the bearers of the ark. And as they carried the ark, they were carrying the very, very presence of the Lord. Yeah. And the Bible says that as they carried the ark, every six places, they stopped and they sacrificed a fatling and they worshiped God. Mm -hmm. and then they took another step and they worshiped God and offered up another sacrifice. See, when you, when you get in the pace and the rhythm of God mm -hmm. and you go according to God's pace, you, that, that means you feel in the boom, boom. The very heartbeat of God. You're not too fast ahead of God, but you're walking right in step with God. Yes, Lord. And I want to encourage you all today to get in step with where God is. Because in every step, you say, thank you, God, for getting me to this point. Thank you, God. I need your help now. I need your direction. I need some understanding. And as you thank God and praise God and reflect upon that step, God will give you the movement for the next step. And then you take the next step and you pause and you reflect and you thank God and ask God to give you a new revelation, continual revelation. And then you pick up the other foot and you step again. And when you get to that step, you thank God and you reflect and you praise God for revelation. And you give God glory and you thank God and you worship God. Amen. And every step along the way, you pace yourself. And as you pace yourself, you're praising God and worshiping God and living a life along the journey that every step along the way you are giving God the thanks. Hallelujah. Uh, brothers and sisters, that's how you do the journey. That's how you do the journey. And right now, we are in a step. And we are in a moment of praise and thanksgiving. God has brought us to July in February. We realized that there was a, de a disease, a virus that could kill us. But look at you now. God has brought you safe thus far. He has put his covering over your life. Yes, some may not have made it, but thanks be to God, God is still being God. Yeah. The virus could have wiped all of us oh, out, but we're yeah. still here and we remain, and because we remain, we're to give God the thanks and the glory. Jesus. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm very thankful. I'm so hallelujah happy and thank you, Jesus, glad for being, for God being God. My spirit burst this morning. I'm filled with joy this morning. I'm happy and I'm thankful about who God is. Yes, sir. Because it was in this message that God let me know that you are at a step. And God has given a vision for a new church. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can't speak for all the other churches. But in this step right here, God has shown a new vision for the Mount Sinai church. And so I, I pause right now. I stop right now. And I'm, I, I'm just saying thank yeah, you, Jesus. Yeah. I, I thank you for revelations. And I thank you for prayer because I've been calling on his name. And I've been asking God, God, wh where are we now? What should we do? And God says, I'm, I'm going to bless the church with a new vision for the church. And in the new vision, everybody's going to have to take a step. All right. And in the step, hear God. Because mm. there's going to be new things that you all going to be doing. Worship, as we have known it in the past, is not going to be the same. There's going to be a new version of worship. Yeah, and in yeah. that version of worship, we will praise and give God the glory and the thanks. But then we may get up and go do some missional work. Mm -hmm. And on the same day at the same time. And God's going to allow us to do it. And then we're going to take another step and come to another spot. And God's going to bless again. Yeah. And we're going to praise and yeah. give God the thanks and the glory. And we're going to pace ourselves and keep 
walking as God opens up his vision and as God gives revelation to how he wants things done, that's how we're going to govern our sin. Hallelujah. David, oh Israel, they had the trumpets and they were playing and they were dancing and they were pacing themselves. And Michael, Saul's daughter, saw David out there dancing in the streets. He was coming out of his clothes. He was dancing and shouting. And he had a reason to shout. He had a reason to praise God. He had a reason to let his clothes go. He had a reason not to be ashamed. Why? Because he looked back over in 1 Samuel and looked where God had brought him from. From being out on the hills, taking care of his daddy's sheep as a little boy, to now sitting on the throne of Israel. He had a reason to praise God. And you ought to have a reason to praise God as you look back where God has brought you from and gotten you to this very moment. You have a reason. And right now, wherever you are, you ought to praise God by lifting your hands in your living room, by lifting your hands in your bedroom, and lifting your hands at your kitchen table and tell God, thank you. Tell him, thank you. Saul didn't like it. Saul's daughter didn't like it. She had her daddy's spirit. <laughs> David looked back at her. He said, you know what? You're not going to stop my praise. He said, God chose me over your father. And just because you don't like it, that doesn't mean I'm not going to praise the Lord. My brothers and sisters, people not going to like it. Some people not going to like the transition. Some people are not going to like the difference. But we're going to still praise the Lord. Yes, sir. We're going to still give God the glory. You want to know why? Because we're at a new place now. We're at a new season now. We're at a new spot now. And we got to adjust to the new spot. So everybody's going to have to some way get on board. But I want to let you know the way that you get on board is get on board by giving thanks unto God. Yeah. David was doing something new and radical in the life of Israel. He was bringing the presence of the Lord back. And maybe you haven't had that full presence of God in your life. And now that you haven't been able to come to the house of worship along with the others and praise God, you have to be by yourself and praise God. Maybe the presence of the Lord has been restored in your life and now you can give God praise. Now you know what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now you know what it means to thank God for every little thing. Now you know what it means to thank God for your health. Now you know what it means to thank God for your healing. Now is the time oh, to pray and give God the praise. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> David, mm -hmm. then take into consideration Saul's door. He is supposed to be why? He looked beyond that. Mm -hmm. You want to know why? Because he saw the king of kings sitting on the throne. Hallelujah. And he said, that's who I'm going to worship. My brothers and sisters, we've gotten to a step that we look beyond COVID-19 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and see God sitting on the throne. Everybody wants to stop and look at education. Everybody wants to stop and look at who's going to be the next president. Everybody wants to stop and look at what other states are doing. Everybody wants to stop and look around at the racial, social injustice. But I want to tell everybody who's listening today, yeah, you see all of that, but I want you to look past all of that and see God the king governing racial injustice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See the king God granting wisdom to the educational system and to parents and to young people. See God sitting on the throne directing and giving new vision to the church. See God high and lifted up, raining down knowledge to your home of how you should live your life now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See God as king.
because you're a chosen vessel of God. Yes. And there's a new there's a new direction that we're moving in. And there's going to be some new steps that you and I must take. And I want to encourage you today to as we move into a new directional season to enjoy the journey. Mm -hmm. Will you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you today. We love you. We give you thanks. Because you have brought us safe thus far. Some days in the previous past, we have lived in panic and in fear. Didn't know which way to turn. And maybe we question who you are. But today we pause and say, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for loving me. That you allowed me to see this day. Don't deserve it, but I, I'm grateful. Have not always been diligent in what I should be doing, but thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you that you have been good to the people that I know. Thank you for allowing me to see a brand new day. Yes, Jesus. I honor you, God. I honor you. I thank you for still allowing me to have contact with the fellowship of the saints thank you thank you for technology that keeps me connected yes. thank you Lord that I slept last night and I woke up this morning thank you thank you Lord for the rain in which we've had we're still having food on our tables thank you and even during tragic moments in life you still brought us. Mm -hmm. We're still able to open our mouths. Even if maybe in the midst of confusion and pain, we can still say thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You're still good. And you're still worthy to be praised. And as we have paused for prayer, if there's somebody today who has not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, this is your moment in time to accept Jesus. Know that Jesus Christ died upon the cross. Yes, this is an old story, but it's still a true story. Mm -hmm. That Jesus died on the cross to save mankind from their sins. Why, why out of all people was Jesus the one? Why do we have to pause for Jesus? Because Jesus is holy and righteous. He is a sacrifice whom God sent to save people of their wrongdoings and their transgressions. So we, when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord, we accept the sacrifice of his blood that covers our sins. And maybe you are that person today that needs to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior over your life. Today, confess your sins that I'm a sinner. Done wrong, but I want to be made right. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ has done that in your life. And the Bible says you shall be saved. Today, if you're also a person looking for a church home, church family, we want to be a part of your life and be a part of your family. We want to welcome you in. So today, if that is you who wants to make a decision, go to the Mount Sinai Fairmore dot com website and click on forms and fill those forms out and let us know the decision that you have made. I pray God that you would honor everybody this week who's listening. Bless them with supernatural blessings. In Jesus' name we all say together, wherever you are, amen. Amen. The Lord is good.